Good morning, everybody. Today uh, we are going to talk about a coach in action. We were uh, all these days we are uh, talking about how to prepare ourselves. Now we have prepared ourselves. Now the next action is how to put these things into action. Of course, our action counts a lot. Now sometimes, rather than words, our actions have a great impact on the outcome. Yes, today we have with us Dr. Rakesh Kumar Yadav. Dr. Rakesh Kumar Yadav, who is the Assistant Director of Physical Education, Jawaharlal Nehru University, Delhi. Now, talking about Sir, he has earned his BPEd, MPEd, MPhil, and PhD, also Diploma in Computational Statistics from LNIP Gwalior, and he is specialized in exercise physiology as well as track and field. He is a avid reader and a researcher who is very keen in uh, research activities, who has published more than 20 articles in uh, various reputed uh, national and uh, international journals. Uh, yes, uh, today we have uh, an eminent personality who is handling all the, uh, what we say, physical education activities. He is periading the physical education activities in the University of uh, Jawaharlal Nehru. So on behalf of everyone, uh, I extend a cordial welcome to you, sir. Uh, on behalf of Sports Authority of India, Lakshmi Bhai National College of Physical Education, Minister of Youth Affairs and Sports, Hello India, and uh, on behalf of all the participants, I extend my heartfelt uh, uh, welcome to Dr. Rakesh Kumar Yadav. Welcome you, sir. Thank you, Sudeshji. Thanks a lot. I also, I also welcome uh, another panelist, uh, Dr. Narendra Gyangwa, who is also an expert in this field. I also welcome you, sir. I also welcome uh, all the panelists uh, and uh, all, all the participants to this session. I hope this session will be of uh, a, a great experience. Over to you, Rakesh Yadav, sir. Sir, please. Thank you. Thank you, Sudesh Ji. Thanks a lot. Respected members of organizing committee, dignitaries, and my fellow learners. First of all, I would like to congratulate Lakshmi College of Physical Education Fraternity for organizing such a wonderful program. Which, is been, which has been titled as Physical Education Community Program. I congratulate them for making such a wonderful effort and give all of us an opportunity to learn and grow. I also thank them to give me to come and talk at their platform. I, on this 22nd June, wish you a very happy International Day of Yoga, which we celebrated yesterday. Today, I'm going to present my views on the topic coach in action i'll be focusing my discussion around the preparations needed by coach to attain the objective of learning and to enhance the quality of teaching quality of coaching in training sessions today i'll be talking about the preparations which are required in a particular training plan particular training unit that is the smallest unit of a training plan a training session I would like to talk to you about various considerations which may be helpful in the development of personality of a sportsman. As you know, as you know the biggest periodization, biggest cycle of particular a house of bricks. Bricks make the walls, walls make the house, make the rooms, and rooms make the house. So the complete structure is based on the strength of a particular brick. Hello, Ragit, sir. Uh, sir, आप, आपका ठीक तरह से आ नहीं है सर. Sir, can yeah. you just uh, just uh, stop your video, then you can talk, sir. Yeah, yeah, fine, definitely. You just stop your video. Am I audible now, sir? Uh, yeah. yeah. You please stop your video, sir. Video, sir. Yeah. And uh, now you can talk, sir. Is it okay? Yeah, sir. You you, you may please uh, stop your video. Video. 
so that in between there will not be any history. Okay, sir. You please talk now, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, before starting the topic, I would like to take you to the memories of your childhood. Okay. So, can you remember who was your favorite coach or teacher, and what affected you the most? What what were the, his qualities? What were the aspects of his personality which still make you to remember him or her? I think those qualities are the reasons. Those qualities are the are the basic factors which have helped us to retain our careers in the field of physical education and sports. Okay, so. i must say that this is the day we must thank them for the all the for all the hard work they have put in us for the art all the efforts they have put in us to make us what we are today there happened an incident when i was working in kendra vidyalaya sangathan there was an inspection conducted by our head officer he took our meeting and conveyed us a message the message was he started with telling us the qualities of a student how many types of students are there how many types of players are there is it fine is it fine sudesh ji am i audible just input included hello yes isme just ek screen piche jana just uh, oh, that screen ha theek hai to yahan pe aapko ye batana hai ki actually jo u dice wala system hai ye abhi abhi humne usko introduce kiya theek hai <coughs> pehle pehle jo tha bahut sare schoolon ne apne affiliation number bhara hua tha तो आपको बताना कि जिन्होंने एफिलिएशन नंबर या तो यूडाइस नंबर भरा हुआ है जो भी अपने भरा हुआ था या तो स्कूल का एफिलिएशन नंबर या यूडाइस नंबर जो भी अपने भरा हुआ हेलो हेलो सुजीत सर हेलो 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 या या डॉक्टर राकेश कैन यू हियर मी यस यस आई कैन हियर यू सर यू प्लीज कैरी ऑन सर ओके 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 फाइन सो व्हाट ही टोल्ड अस he he asked us what were the types of students uh you actually handle what are their qualities divided on based on their qualities can you tell me what kind of students are there we were telling a lot of things like students are smart some students are fast learners some are slow learners and like that and what he explained to us that there are four categories of students the first category is genius the second category is genius the third category is genius and the fourth category of the students are also genius and he then asked what are the different categories of teachers he told us the teachers are having four categories the first category of the teacher is the first category of the coach is genius the second category of the coach is average the third category of the coach is satisfactory and the fourth category of coaches may be called poor in their coaching skills now the difference comes when a genius player meets a genius coach the by product will be a genius sports person if a genius child meets a average coach the average the the, the by product will be an average sports person if a genius child the third category of child is genius and if he if, if it happens that he meets some satisfactory coach the result will be a satisfactory player and the last category of the child who is a genius who is also genius if he happens to meet with a poor coach the result will be a poor sportsman so what a child what a player is going to do in his career that very much is influenced by the kind of coach he is going to meet so coming to the first slide i would like to recapitulate what you have already learned i no need not to uh, speak a lot on this but basically the uh, we are we have learned the training conception the kind of training the multi year planning the complete long that's a complete long term training process keeping in mind a major competition like olympics then training conception the the long term training plan is again divided into small uh training goals sub goals in which we start with basic training age then the the player went uh, goes up to the advanced training then he strives for higher performance then there is yearly plan quarterly plan then the comes the then then comes these cycle plans there are 3 to 6 weeks operational plan all these divisions are based on 
the idea of attainment of smaller objectives which lead to attainment of highest level of goal highest level of performance so the key considerations of a coach what we have learned till now is to have an objective have a theme of what he is going to teach what he is going to coach on what basis he is going to develop the qualities in a sports person the purpose of the development the age group with which with, with which he is dealing the duration of time which he is having for a major or minor competition the number of participants he is dealing with because he will have to divide his time in number of participants the gender actually and the level of participation the level of participation the level of competition the level of uh, sports in which his participants his players are going to take part all these things have to be taken care of can we please move on the next slide thank you so in order to achieve this in order to achieve these goals the scientists and the coaches have over a period of time divided the whole training career the complete training process the complete training career career of the sports person in different phases now can you please tell me what are the different phases of the development and what basis and on what basis are they being innovated are they being uh, uh, made are they being prepared i think all must be aware that these phases of development are basically taking into consideration the age factor the level of the participants and their training age why the whole training process is divided into these phases i think because we want an sports person to ultimately be a champion in his life his or her life so attainment of the goal in an efficient manner can be facilitated by the by dividing the training plan of the individual into phases the the next thing is the child is a human resource the child is a very important entity in this universe in this world every child has got its worth so if we divide the total career of the child total career of the of the sports person in various phases then we will be able to minimize the risk of the wastage of that particular entity that particular child many of the times we have heard that this 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 boy or this girl used to practice a lot but uh, now his career is finished he cannot make up to he, he didn't make uh, anything big in his life and now he is jobless now he is not he cannot do anything he don't he doesn't have any particular skill so at the end what happens the problem is the resource the human resource which was there with us has been wasted this particular division this particular division of the phases of training will help in preventing the risk of wastage of human resource it could be minimized now every individual is different he differs according to his age his or her sex maturity and personal goals so these all characteristics like maturity personal goals the 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 aim of training are all dependent upon the age factor because age factor is directly directly related to the physiological psychological and behavioral maturity so the training plans the training uh, activities which are being given at particular age are basically emphasizing upon the particular characteristics of that individual that player okay it helps it also helps the coach to prevent the child from excessive and unbalanced training load if the training the, the phase of development or the training plan is not divided according to the phase of development and if same kind of training program is implemented throughout the stages of development then at some time at some point of time where the kid the child is going to be over stressed he, he is going to be overloaded and at some point of time when he grows up the training the training stimulus will not be matching his requirement adaptation will not take this further improvement is not going to take this so it helps to develop to 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 uh, uh, keep a balance between the stress and the response if 
there is no stage or there is no phase specific development or phase specific training plan then what may be the problems there may be troubles like postural deformities such as scoliosis occurrence of long term fatigue fractures premature bonification etc and when you talk about psychological are disadvantages then the child may have depression he may have long term state of frustration which may lead to psychic diseases we all must have to take care of the age factor the age factor in which the child is there and we must design the training program according to that one it also helps to create a stable foundation for the next stage or the next category of development is post training must be focused on managing basic constructions such which are necessary for competition to be carried out it means necessary it means the teaching children techniques basic rules basic and standards of behavior tactical procedures necessary to carry out the game all these in compliance with the respective development of motor skill can we move on to the next slide please now we will be discussing these training phases these training uh, uh, particular phases of development and the training which is being given to them imparted to get them the standard training is uh, phase by phase we are taking going to take the first phase that is 0 to 6 years to 10 years this stage of development is very critical in the life of individual now i would i like like to ask the participant do you remember what activities did you like when you were in same age when you were 6 to 10 years old what activities did you like i hope you didn't like any particular kind of restrictions they didn't like particular restrictions they didn't like to be uh, stopped while doing the activities they didn't you didn't like to be taught much you didn't like to be get corrected much you didn't like to be uh, staying in discipline and playing the game you have restrictions on how we are going to play the game your coach is telling that yes play this way you have to follow these rules so there should be no much rules and regulations in this stage of development the coach should have a basic idea of what he is going to teach what skills do do he want his trainees to learn and he should plan activities in such a way that these activities are learned without being specifically mentioned to the children suppose in football if the teacher wants the uh, kids the coach wants the kids to have an idea about uh, uh, passing skills then he may devise games in which students need to pass each other make a lot of passes he may demarcate an area in which the students score with accurate passes they may he may divide them into teams he may bring a bit challenging he may bring a lot of challenging conditions in that so a lot of factors might be influencing in this area in this age these factors so uh, these factors are characterized by the particular age group i am going to tell you some of the characteristics of this particular phase of development i am going to be a bit fast because you can get it anywhere still i am going to tell you so that you can idea you can have an idea of what the things are what the things characterize this particular uh, age group the skeletal system in this age group is not fully developed even the spine curves are not fully in action learning and thinking is focused upon individual items uh the, the 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 child cannot draw connection he cannot draw patterns out of various movements he cannot draw he cannot draw conclusion out of out of various abstract things will is not developed because the ability to concentrate is not there in these children they cannot have a strong will power at this particular age they cannot focus more than 5 minutes on any of the activities basic motor abilities their most uh, basic motor abilities like walking jogging jumping simple throwing have been have already been developed to a good extent and using these skills only we will have to transit them to a phase of finer skills it is very sensitive period to develop coordination and partial speed so the coach should focus upon the activities 
which develop neuromuscular coordination because if they develop good neuromuscular coordination at this stage they are very sensitive at this stage and they, if they are able to do it if the coach is able to provide them with activities which uh, help them to grow the develop the neuromuscular coordination then i think the task in the the the, the objective which has to be achieved in later stages will be facilitated much it this is going to be a great help then there should be no difference between boys and girls there is no difference in this stage between boys and girls in the terms of their physical growth in the terms of their mental aspects there is almost no difference so in this uh, phase the principal aspects of training should be the child shall be taken gradually from spontaneous movements to systematic sports preparation then it should also include standards and behaviors in the sports the, acti the activities should should be fun oriented the environment should be uh, such that no particular stress or performance and comp or uh, excessive competition is there then the the child should be given recognition for his effort because the child wants to get recognition if he is being given recognition he will be he or she will not resort to any kind of misbehavior and the chances of misbehavior in the session will be less because if a child is engaging in misbehavior activities again and again there might be problems of lack of recognition then activities must be fun oriented as i told you the coach the coach must formulate the activities which are having a purpose to develop particular skill or give an idea about particular skills such as kicking appropriate passing etc but they should not be told formally in this stage the language used should be come on let us play let us engage in this activity let us see if we can do this and it should not be like this let us uh, come on class i am going to teach you this skill today so this five or six drills are focused upon learning the skill the moment you give them a target to learn the particular things i think the focus will be lost and they will lose the interest so the language plays a very important role in this page there's the focus should not be on the physical conditioning because this this is the stage of natural growth and development no excessive stress in the terms of training load physical training load shall be laid, up, laid down upon the children next slide please next slide slide please now coming to the foundation phase one of the most critical phases but it is also not very much different from the uh, previous phase the difference lies in the type of exercises we are going to choose what kind of exercises we will be choosing a little bit advanced we will give um, them start giving them small targets we will start introducing them to uh, the basic nature of competition we may uh, form smaller groups we can introduce them to uh a basic rules of the game we can we will not leave them on their own to do the activities like as we did in the previous stage the atmosphere atmosphere in that in this particular training phase should be little bit guided they should not be left on their own at least the kind of activities the that the coach is going to uh, uh the coach has organized uh, for the children should be uh, guided and they should be they should have have an idea about what are they going to learn with these activities so the conditioning if we talk about the conditioning part the intensity of the physical conditioning should shall be very low the volume may be a little high but the intensity shall be very low because if a lot of intense intensive training is given children might might lose interest and it may put over the, their physiological systems to over stress next slide now comes the most critical stage of for the most critical stage which may be termed as formative phase the age group is under 14 to under 16 years in this phase a lot of new things are being faced by the trainees a lot of hormonal changes changes due to the att attainment of puberty so this phase is very critical in the terms of their behavioral development hormonal development physical development and their technical and tactical development this phase is characterized by 
uneven biological changes. Uneven biological means unbalanced biological ch challenges. Changes. There might be a lot of difference in the behavioral aspects, hormonal uh, aspects, in their physical aspects in a single group. Even if the students are of a same age, same particular age, then also there might be a lot of differences in those children. The issue is they have attained or they are about to attain their puberty in this phase. So it's natural to have a lot of hormonal imbalances. In this phase, the growth is faster as a result of hormones. Definitely when the testosterone levels in the males and uh, in the females, the particular hormones are very high, then the growth will be very faster. Increase in sex hormones will be there. There will be increase in muscle strength, but still the size may increase. The overall overall frame is going to increase, but there is a lack of development or lack of firmness in the tendons and the ligaments. They are not ready for a very high level of load. So this thing should be kept in mind while planning these activities. Development of Abstract and logical thinking is one of the main characteristics in this stage. The kids in this stage are not going to follow you very simply. They are not going to listen to you whatever you say at once. So you will have to very much critical. We will have to understand their psychology and frame our instructions in such a way that it suits their taste because we want to get our work done. Then there is a significant development in the emotional aspect. Also, the performance of the individual, performance of the kid at this stage increases naturally because all the physical factors are getting enhanced. The performance also is likely to get improved. Bonusification is still not complete and it is significantly limited and it also limits the efficiency of the child. Sensitive period of speed development. It is a very sensitive develop period for the speed development and specific activities for speed development shall be given to given to them otherwise the child is going to face the problems in overall speed development in the later stages in this phase the endurance development is mainly through the methods which are uh, uh, with methods of uninterrupted training the, the endurance training is low in intensity and high in volume when we talk about the skills the skills are introduced at much higher level and an understanding of the concept of the skills may be given. The coach, an individual may try giving, the coach, the coach may try giving them uh, uh, an opportunity to experiment with their skills in order to learn their skills, to make mistakes and to, and to reach to a point where they can have a logical understanding about the particular concepts in that skill. Then in the mental, when you talk about the mental side of the game, mental aspect of the uh, individual, then uh, we can see that they like to work in the group. They like to do work and they like to work in the group. They form a peer group. So small sided games are games which may, uh, 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 which may allow them to engage in the teamwork may be given. The atmosphere should be uh, uh, a little bit stressful means the goal should be there. Challenges should be increased and they must be introduced to the high inten uh, uh, low intensity high volume conditioning exercises next slide please next slide please now this is the phase in which the child or the 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 trainee becomes adult and he almost all the developmental aspects of the trainee are at final stage talking about his capability of thinking, his capability of understanding the concepts, the technical aspects grows a lot. So tactical training also may be introduced along with refinement in the technical skills, te technical skills. After 16, there may be a significant requirement in the training intensity and volume. In this phase, the anaerobic activities may also be introduced because the physiological systems have become so efficient, have they have become efficient to be able to take the load of anaerobic activities. 
earlier in previous phases there was no systematic approach of strength training but in this particular phase the strength training may have an systematic and progressive approach of a systematic uh, 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 style of advancement or systematic uh, approach so strength training measures strength training activities may be adopted there might be uh, improvement in detailed uh, understanding and the technical preparation is increased technical preparation along with the technical utility of the techniques also increased in this uh, at, in this particular age the coach starts acting like a friend of the uh, participants from friend, friend of the players so the training regime becomes semi guided the players are exposed to high intensity playing and training conditions when i say high intensity it means in the terms of competition in the terms of uh, uh, load in the terms of training in the terms of their overall preparation the intensity will become increased and now they will have the actual phase of their sporting life physical conditioning the strength development power development all these things become result oriented and they may be put in particular phases of periodization so periodization uh, particular preparation for the competitions may be started in this phase next slide please so now comes age specific training age specific as we discussed as we discussed the various uh, stages of development of an individual so it is very important to implement all these ideas implement all this knowledge into a training session into a training plan so a lot of practical things need to be discussed such as playing area for the kids to keep the intensity low we may choose the small playing areas in which we, they may get a lot of chances to contact get a contact with the ball the con the more the contact will be the game the training session will be much more interesting than the number of players smaller groups smaller groups may be kept uh, while we are uh, working on the refinement of the techniques if technical training is the aim then we can work with the smaller groups then the game rules and intensity the game rules should be introduced at particular age if the uh, if the if the child is in formative stage the rules of the game must be introduced the intensity shall be uh, enhanced if we are uh, going to coach the kids then the equipment shall be very much appropriate the rules might may be uh, very much easy for the kids but as they advance the rules may also become specific i would like to i like uh, uh, dr gangwar to play the video here Request him. Sir, okay, sir, but uh, sir, uh, it will take just uh, two, three seconds to play. That's why. Okay. Okay. Yeah. सर आपने ऑडियो शेयर नहीं किया है आप वहाँ पे ऊपर जाइए बार में ना मोर करके बटन है सबसे ऊपर मोर में जाके एनेबल कंप्यूटर साउंड कर लीजिए ऊपर सबसे ऊपर ना जहाँ पे जूम है वहाँ पे मोर का बटन है मोर मोर में एक एनेबल कंप्यूटर साउंड आएगा आप ऊपर ऊपर जाइए जहाँ पे जूम जूम का बटन है ना आपके उसमें सबसे ऊपर वहाँ पे मोर करके होगा टॉप राइट पे राइट पे होगा जो जूम बार है ना बार में एक मोर है मोर में आपको एनेबल कंप्यूटर साउंड करना है आपको दिख गया Okay, guys, remember, do the thing we practiced. Remember? No, 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 not that thing. The other thing we practiced. Thank <laughs> you.
everybody, come in. Come in now, everybody. Treats, I got treats. Ah, there we go. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do, all right? Annie, I want you out on the wing. Trent, I want you to fake the pass to Annie and push the ball up the field, and then pass the ball to your forwards who are Sophie and Chris. Sophie, I want you to hold the ball and draw the defense out to you, all right? Then I want you to float a lob pass all the way over the defense to Chris. Chris, you take it in for the score, just like we did in practice. Everybody got it? Let's go get them! So now we can see what a wonderful video it was and what message was, uh, what, what, what the message it was given through video. The coach focuses upon all the players. He helps them to plan the strategy. He helps them with the direction. He considers everyone, even the slowest player in the team, even the, the, the player who was not having uh, any kind of particular kind of quality in the, in the team, he even considers him and gives an opportunity to play. So these things are very important when, when we are dealing with the kids. When we move on to the next training session, then we can see the 12 steps in the process of coaching. coaching. These are the 12 state, uh, steps in planning of the particular training session, training plan. When we talk about the first step, that is planning. And this is one of the most important steps because the whole training session is going to depend over it. What shall the coach plan? The coach shall plan the activities, the demonstrations, the explanations. He should consider the feedbacks taken in the previous sessions while planning a new session. The planning must be inclusive. It must be flexible to accommodate any new changes. He must be willing to adopt the new changes. Then the next step is organizing. What shall he organize? He shall organize the activities. He shall organize the stations. He shall organize the alternative uh, uh, aspects, alternative things. If suppose something doesn't work, he should have a plan B for that. He should be ready with the plan B. He should organize the equipments. So all things should be organized well in advance because it saves time. It will prevent misbehavior in the class because when the class arrives and organizing takes place, then there are chances that uh, there will be a lot of misbehavior because students will not be engaged. Then explanation, the third stage is explanation. What is needed to be explained? We have to explain the plan. We have to explain the activities. The coach have to explain the objectives, methods, drills and exercises, the do's and don'ts in the session. That must be explained and that must be clear to the participants. Then next come the rules. The rules must be there according to the age, according to the understanding, according to the uh, mental status of the, of the participants. The rules must be clear. They must instigate discipline and they must be focused on avoiding injuries of particular nature. Then in demonstrations, demonstrations should be clear. There, it, the, through the demonstration, the teacher must be able to give a clear image of what he is going to, uh, what he wants the students to perform, what he wants the player to perform. So the demonstration should be very much clear. It should promote understanding of the moment better. Then he may start the training session after these six stages. After the training session is started and students are engaged in the activities, there is a keen observation required. If the observation in key is keen, if the observation is very systematic and all the points are being noted, then the coach will be able to modify the behavior of the children in, in a better way. Identify the mistakes, then he should, after identify, he should stop the child and he should correct the particular moment. If he needs, again, he should explain, again, he should give demonstration and he will again let them start. The next stage is 
to uh, after uh, stopping it should uh, he should correct the things and rehearse the things again he should give an opportunity to rehearse the things either in isolation either in separation or with the team again then again debrief, debrief the team or the objectives and other aspects the next slide please now when we uh, now till so far we were discussing about a lot of theoretical aspects of a particular training session now uh, this slide shows what a typical training plan or an example of training plan how it should be i'm going to play the video and after after that i'll explain fully planned session you can see the space between the participants you must have seen the kind of activities they are performing the strength the session is having and the kind of equipment used these all things need to be arranged at the beginning and such innovative things for warming up and all this must be introduced so a typical training session consists of warming up to increase the body temperature and facilitate the blood blood flow to the muscles then there might be a lot of activities like circuit training there might be technical drills tactical exercises free play games which give a lot of freedom to the players to experiment on their own then it is followed by the cool down then all these activities are the intensity are enhanced are increased in the terms of their volume and intensity as the level of the participant of increases as the performance requirements increase the progression take place over time and when these activities are designed keeping in mind all the previous points the progression also takes place along with the growth in age next slide please fun games are very important they keep the child engaged and they keep the help the child to avoid stress they bring the interest in the child and at the same time they also uh, uh introduce the child in very efficient way the nature of the competition the challenges of the competition can we go for the next slide please or yeah we can go for the video also this fun game called stuck, stuck in the mud and this is how we teach it and stop there okay volunteer all right excellent put you in the bib All right, as James is running around, if he touches you, you have to open your legs really wide, and another player who hasn't been touched has to go under your legs, and then you can go. Okay, jog around anywhere in the area. Go. Get him. Yep. Open your legs. Open your legs. Can you get under? Good. Yeah, good. Open your legs. Go on Anif. Someone help him. Someone help him. Excellent. Oh, I've got both of you. Both in. Keep going. Keep going. Keep getting him. Good. i think the core the coach was much more engaged than the players and that has to be there if we are training the kids we will have to think like them we will have to become the kid and at the same time we will have to keep in mind the purpose of that particular activity the excitement and the enthusiasm shown by the coach enhances the enthusiasm in the player also next slide please then comes the planned training sessions how we are supposed to plan the training session how we are supposed to keep the things in a training session so that a lot of uh, encouragement is given to the child and a lot of 
uh, encouragement is given to the child to attain the objectives. We will have to set up and we should have the layout plans. We should have a proper training set up. What activities are we, are we going to organize in that particular session? And what objectives do we have? We need to a set up of equipments and we, we need to have a set up of training stations. We should lay out the plans and upon a paper, we should have a properly laid, laid out blueprint of what activities we are going to conduct. If this is not there, there might be chances that we get diverted from our particular objective and the training session may not be that much fruitful. Then the structure of activities to be implemented. We will have to structure the activities. We need to, uh, we need to have a systematic blueprint of all the activities which are going to be implemented. And at the same time, we will have to consider all other factors such as age, training level, and uh, uh, the performance requirements. Then, then only we can have a good structure of the training session. Then training formations. We can have different training stations. We can have different uh, 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 in a group. We can have uh, smaller groups, uh, subgroups, which can be divided into uh, uh, on the basis of their homogeneity. If there is a lot of heterogeneity in the group, uh, these the, the, the players may be divided on the basis of their homogeneous aspects like age, skill level, and they may be given different goals. So the training formation should be like that. Then group organization strategy should be there. If the goal is to prepare for competitive things, then small grounds, a small uh, uh, area should be divided on the field, and uh, all the all the players must be given chances to perform in their own area, on their own zone then range of ability levels shall, shall be included. All the participants must be there given a chance. Transition activities, if the child is trans transiting from one phase to other phase or from one skill level to another level, there should be appropriate time given to the transition activities. Because if the transition doesn't take place, proper transition doesn't take place, the previous activities which are learned might be uh, a problem in the, in, the, in, the, in the new learning or there might be uh, a, a lot of issues in learning of new skills, they might take time. So if the transition is good, proper understanding, proper demonstration, proper activities are given, the transition will be very smooth and the child will not feel any problem. So coaching approach should be matched to the need of the participants because we all, we always have to focus on the player centered coaching approach, approach, which we should know the needs of the participants. We should know what, are their developmental, what are their uh, performance related requirements and our training strategy must be uh, oriented according to those only. And if we do all this very systematically, definitely the risk is going to be minimized if the rules, if the training formation, if the setup and layout plans are being prepared, keeping in mind all the considerations as for the phase of development, then the risk of injury and risk of uh, uh, getting uh, hurt might be minimized. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, now we are showing certain sample activities, sample football or soccer sessions. So in this, you can see the ground has been divided into uh, various parts. We can do it uh, simultaneously or a training session may, be, may include all these activities together. In the, in, the, in, the, in the first uh, picture, you can first image, you can, see, you can see that there are balls and there are balls at the center and all the team members are standing with their, along, with the, uh, along with the cones at their stations. And this is a group activity which is being organized. This is going to give maximum opportunity for the participants to come in the contact of the ball. And at the same time, their physical and mental abilities will also be discussed. So, we will have to use our own creativity, use our own innovation with the principles of equal opportunity of develop equal equal opportunity of development to, to all and maximum enhancement of learning. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a uh, progression. In this, you can see the the difficulty level of the same things have been uh, increased and the participants, uh, the players are given different goals, different targets at the time of training. 
so that they can be aware they can become aware of the challenges in the first slide you can see they are having uh, different station they are supposed to perform different activities and finally they have to reach to the goal in the sixth picture you can see a small area game has been demonstrated and the progression should be taking place in this manner so that when they reach to the uh, when when the students when the players are at the level of participation in particular competition they must have an idea of what all conditions they are going to face in that competition next slide please session planner is very important and a lot of new innovative methods we can see in these days uh, regarding the use of session planners so coaches may get an uh, uh, already prepared session planner in which he can fill his uh, his credentials he can fill his uh, planning he can uh, write his own planning or he can prepare himself this uh, uh, this session planners help the coach to have an objective oriented coaching if the session planner is not there then there are chances that some players might not have an idea the coach may not focus upon all the players the coach may not focus upon all the objectives the time taken to teach the to coach the things might be more than expected so the session planner planner keeps the coach intact with his objectives and the learning takes place next slide please now there is a question to participants you will have to find out what is not proper in the video and you can type the same thing in the chat window Come back on, just go. I'll get these things set up here. Damn kids. Yeah, right, right, right. I'm just setting up a game for you now. All right, here we go. Here's the field here. Let's go. Bring the ball. Come on. All right, what are we going to do with these kids today? All right, over there, please. And you over there. All right, and kind of stand over here. Stand over here. Come on. Come on, no wonder you guys can't win on the weekend. Over here, wait, over here please. There we go. And you guys without a ball, all stand over there. Can't you see what we're doing? We, we've got to pass the ball. Ah, oh, I give up. You guys are hopeless, hopeless. Come on. What are you doing? Come on, kick the ball. That's not how you kick it, kick it right. Come on guys, can't you do anything right? Come on. Kick the ball, kick the ball. What is it, mate? What? It? Don't worry about that. Just get rid of it. Come on, let's go. All right, come on, come on. Here's the halfway line here. Go and use the sideline, use the sideline. Oh, it's about time you did something good. Yeah, it is about time. What a waste my time. I'll come here and do everything and, oh. all right. When you're in front of goals, you want to kick it as hard as you can. Just bang it. That's all I want you to do. Come on. Now get out there and play. We've got to score goals. Go on, keep playing. You get that ball. Hello. Mate, I'm going fishing. I just, I, me and the missus just bought this massive big boat. It, it's awesome. What are you doing? See ya. Come on, guys! I've got better things to do! 
Oh, how could you miss that? Yes, I can see a lot of replies in the chat box. Like uh, no concentration on coaching, lack of planning, uh, uh, wrong explanation, basic rules, coach is late. Yes, definitely. There are a lot of problems with this uh, particular coaching sessions. And whatever we have learned till now, whatever uh, we have discussed now, Till so far in the, in the slide, I think nothing was there in this in this uh, uh, particular training plan. So we will have to avoid all these mistakes. And what shall we do? That is going to come in the next slide. Next slide, please. Yes. If we want, if we all want to avoid this kind of chaos, we will have to start the session on time. Starting on time is very important. Punctuality of teacher will breed punctuality in the participants, in the players. So, starting the session and leading by example is very important. Arriving at the, at the ground before time will be an exemplary thing to be done by coach. And the next is to be organized on the field. We'll have to be organized in the terms of our equipments, in the terms of training plan, in the terms of activities, and all other aspects of the training uh, session, which may be influencing the behavior and efficiency of the training session. So being organized is very important. Then we have to ensure that kids are also very well prepared because if the kids are not well prepared, we will have to give them time to get prepared while the training session is going on. So they should be informed one day in advance that what we are going to be what the what is going to be conducted in the next training sessions what kind of shoes they require what kind of clothing they need, to, they need to need to wear what kind of specific equipments they are supposed to bring to the training session so that any chaos at the time of training may be avoided on part of the kids on the part of the players we will have to keep the kids active this is very important aspect of checking the misbehavior if the kid kid is not active is if he is given time to relax that is going to feel isolated. He is going to feel like no one is looking at him and he is not under any observation. He will start with small mischiefs. And if it continues, if it goes on, if and if attention is not paid over the kid, then it is going to the, the, the extent of misbehavior or uh, any other activities which may lead him to injury may increase. And the last one is innovate and change activities. That is the most important aspect. Every time, every day, we'll have to be innovative. We will have to give something new to the children so that they are always facing little bit challenges in learning the things. If the things, if the things are not challenging, if the things are not new, they may take, take them very casually. If they are daily, they are performing same things, then the training session will become very, they, they will have a very casual approach towards the training session and the objectives may not be achieved. Adaptation may not occur. Next slide, please. I think this is the most important as, uh, uh, slide. Uh, in this, we are going to uh, basically uh, recapitulate what we have learned. So while planning, while organizing, while designing, the considerations, the aspects which the coach will have to keep, keep in mind are being summed up here. The first one is balanced competition, size or weight, height, match tips. Definitely, if the competition, if the play, if the training session is not conducted among the balanced participants in the terms of their uh, age, learning skills, in the, uh, in the terms of their motor and physical abilities, then injuries might happen, learning might not take place, it might not be challenging for good players to, uh, uh, to learn new skills and to find out new ways to do activities. So a balanced competition size, uh, a balanced competition must be there. The activities must be so designed so that it has a homogeneity in the training group. So the next question is, how can I enhance the learning? Enhancing the learning is one of the most important tasks. We'll have to modify the activities again and again. We will have to uh, link all the things together to enhance the activities. If you want to enhance the activities, 
we will have to select appropriate appropriate methods and modes of training system and formation of training activities which are chosen must be they must be uh, you know uh, uh, they must be planned in a way that it suits to the need of the children so enhancing learning is much more dependent upon the observation of the uh, of coach also if the observation in the previous training sessions is correct and if the proper feedback and response is taken then they may be included in the next training sessions and the training the training session may be enhanced in the terms of learning how do i make it fun making fun is indeed a tedious task it's not that easy because if you want to make the activities fun and at the same time impart the knowledge impart the particular uh, 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 if you want to attain the particular objective while making the activities fun there are chances that your activities may go, may go astray and the students are not able to understand the players are not understand able to understand what object uh, for what objectives what are the training goals for which they conducted the session but making fun making uh, of, uh, the activities fun may have may include making it a bit challenging organizing it in smaller groups giving them small achievable targets recognizing their efforts and at the same time they should be given freedom to an extent that no risk is there for them then dealing with the misbehavior dealing with the misbehavior is one of the most important aspects we will have to uh, draw we have to chalk chalk out very clear cut rules and we will have to uh, inform we will have to have a proper teaching session for the rules and objectives for the uh, to the kids because if rules are not clear there might be uh, uh, there might be an excuse that we didn't understand the particular instruction so rules should be very clear and if the rules are breached the students the kids must be informed about their misbehavior about their uh, about the task which was not uh, appropriate for the training session so that they can improve the coach should not wait for very long to inform them playing surface is very important it should be hazard free it should be leveled and the coach should personally take a round of the ground and he should he should make it sure that the ground is clear of all these uh, uh, hazardous objects then clear written rules should be there there, there must be clear written rules there there must be clear do's and don'ts there must be very clear instructions regarding a particular session plan and the, and what is expected from the students then general conduct rules must be there there they must be written and adequate records must be kept of the performance of the children of the objectives they have achieved of their feedbacks of the training sessions they have undergone everything should be there in written so that at the time of analysis there is there should be no guessing and no to do, there should be no to doping strict anti doping measure should be taken anti doping uh, uh, anti doping education should be given to the children and it must be conveyed to them there that there is a difference between supplementation and doping next slide please the child the the athletes the players must be uh, taught to respect the rules because if at a point of time they are not uh, taught it initially then there might be problems that uh, later on they don't understand the importance of rules and this may hamper their career also next slide respect for teammates is very important to increase the team cohesiveness one must be taught the importance of their teammates they should be given opportunities so that they can mingle with each other they can know each other they can talk to each other and they can spend time talking to each other playing with each other in addition to the ground their time they are spending on the ground so that there can be a emotional bond between all these players next slide please respecting opponents is very important because if there is no opponent there will be no sport so opponents are very important and the athlete the player should be taught how to respect the opponents the opponents are also striving for the same thing 
for which our athletes are striving. So this should be respected. They must be respected. And there are examples in our sports history. There are a lot of examples of extreme level of sportsmanship, which have been shown by various players, elite level players. Next slide. The officials help the uh, or help in the organization of sports activities by keeping a, keeping the records by uh, making the play happen by by uh, by uh, enhancing the spirit of fair play and they are the they are the decision makers. So the player must be taught how to respect the officials, how to respect their decisions, and if there is any controversy, if there is any a uh, sense of dissatisfaction with the decision of the uh, officials, the players must be taught to convey it in a disciplined manner. Next slide, please. Then, then there is a famous saying by Jig Jiggler, remember that failure is an event, not a person. The child must be taught, the player must be taught to deal with the failures. They must be taught how to handle the failures because failure is a part of sports. If anyone has taken sports as a career, then he is bound to come across the failures and that is he should be given adequate information and knowledge regarding the ways he can do, deal with the failures and he should be taught how to overcome the failures. Next slide, please. Fail early, fail fast. This was said by uh, Michael Jordan. And this in this video, uh, I'm not playing it now, but uh, uh, the main aim, the, 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 the chief message, the primary message behind this video is, is to uh, make you aware about, make, make the kids aware, the coach should make kids aware about uh, the failures he is going to face and the ways he can again rise up because this is the key to success. The failure should not uh, make the player uh, weak and he should not feel that this is the ultimately the end of his career. So failure must be dealt, dealt very casually by the players, but the ways must be taught seriously by the coaches. Next slide, please. Failures are inevitable, definitely. Whenever you are attempting for a basket, whenever you are attempting for a goal, there are only two things which can happen. Either you are going to score or you are going to lose. So failures are the part and they are inevitable. They cannot be avoided. One must be ready to take up failures as learning lessons. Next slide, please. It is very important to stay in the moment to not think about the past, to not to think about the future, it must be taught to, taught to the child that if you love the game, you should enjoy the game in the present moment. You should not think about what is going to happen later. Mental rehearsal, various psychological strategies may be given to the children depending upon their age and uh, uh, performance characteristics. Next slide, please. Leadership values must be imbibed in the children. The child's first uh, no, uh, the, uh, the, he learns a lot from the coach. So we will have to become exemplary while demonstrating the leadership skill, which we shall teach them to live in the moment, to perform in the moment, whatever amount of, whatever extent of achievement they have, they must be staying grounded. And every time they lose, either they lose or win, they must behave like they are champions because one loss or one, one defeat doesn't decide your uh, uh, the, your career. Next slide, please. Yes, that is very, very important. We should not be over coaching. The, I have seen many coaches while coaching, what happens? They get involved in every aspect of the training. The child becomes so much emotionally dependent that while he is going for any competition, uh, far away, he will every time he is going to request his coach. If he is not going along with, along, along with the team, he is going to request him. If you cannot come along, I will not practice. I, I cannot perform. You cannot come along, I cannot perform. Every time he is going to repeat this. So the emotional dependency should not be 
to an extent that child is not able to even think of performing without you. So, appropriate strategies must be taken to emotionally make the child dependent. Next slide, please. Now we are coming to summarize this in part. So the plan session as per the development and need of the participants and age of the participants, all the age characteristics, performance characteristics, motor abilities, and the training age also must be taken care of while planning a session. Age specific training should be there in a white in, in order to prepare a pace for higher level of training and to uh, help the child to, to prevent himself from injuries. Session planning and structuring of activities for maximum participation. The session should be planned in such a way. It must be structured in such a way that the maximum out can be, can be derived, and all of them, all the participants, all the players get maximum time to 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 maximum opportunity to participate. There should be progression in training because if there will be no progression, no adaptation is going to take place. And life lessons and leadership skills are very much essential to mentally prepare this the player for the game and for his career thank you thank you very much sir actually it was really informative and it was really enlightening sir now we will move on to the question answer session sir is it okay sir yes yes please. yeah Sir, uh, we have got one question from Mr. Mani Gandhan, who is asking, Sir, of course, uh, inculcating all the scientific aspects into the training is, uh, of course, a mandatory thing. But then, Sir, now, could you please suggest how many hours of training could be given for a sixth standard child? Definitely. See, once we go on to quantify the training thing, to quantify our training program, it is very difficult to give have a, a, a standard timing uh, protocol for the children. Definitely, the children, if we are going for some physical training or the, the session is not fun oriented, then there, there might be chances that the students will not enjoy the session and we'll have to finish it in half an hour and hour. But the, if the session is enjoying and the activities are very low intensity, then the children should be given, the children will automatically love to play for a longer duration that the coach must decide according to the physical ability of the children, the purpose of the, 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 the session and the skill he is going, which he is going to uh, 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 impart, okay, the objective he is going to attain. So I think it may be varying upon the, based on the regions, based upon the characteristic of the participants. So I don't think it's very much appropriate to say that a particular time bound session should be there for different athletes, different players. Yes, sir. As you rightly said, it will depend upon the uh, age characteristics and, and uh, the type of activity we are giving. It will be varying yes. from intensity to intensity Def and it will... Uh, Definitely, from... Mr. Uh, actually, I have heard a lecture uh, three or four days back in which a uh, spe uh, speaker uh, mentioned that there are uh, some of the coaches and a coach has mentioned 10,000 10, hours are required to achieve excellence in particular as in particular field. But at the same time, he told that even a minimum of 20 hours is going to make you reach to a good level of that particular thing. If you are spending 20 hours in that activity, fully engrossed and activities of your interest. So for some people, it might be 5,000 hours. Some people, it might be 20 hours. Some people, it might be 10,000 hours in learning something to get an idea of something. Okay. So it depends. It has got a lot of variations. Yes, sir. As you rightly said, a factor of individuality that comes into play when we take uh, consideration of our uh, sports training. And of, of, of course, sometimes what happens, all the coaches are having a wrong notion that now my kid is going to be a miniature Ronaldinho. So we yeah. cannot expect a sixth standard child to perform at par in level with an international standard athlete. So never just try to implement the training schedule of an international player into your sixth standard or sixth grade child. It will be bringing in a, a, a negative outcome. Yes. It was crystal clear, sir. Now, sir, we are having one more query from an, an, an anonymous uh, attendee who is asking, sir, uh, according to you, what should be the criteria that you have to keep in mind while selecting a, a, a team? Now, he has asked for soccer, but I am putting just in front of you. Whatever it be, what are 
for the general criteria that we can just keep in mind in order to select a team your views please sir see the first criteria for selecting a team should be winning our team should win okay for that every team constitute of different kind of players like if you take example of footballers there will be defenders uh, there will be uh, uh, there will be uh, uh, strikers there will be midfielders there will be goalkeepers and the selection of the team first of all depends upon what with what kind of formation we are going to play then only we can decide the number of players then if we have decided that then we will have to choose best out of out of the them we we can implement selection of team sometimes uh, we are told that yes organize a selection trial today and we have we will have to select the team selection of the team cannot be taking place in one day it's a long term process we can we have to analyze the player in long run his not only his technical skills but his cyclist psychological adaptability to how much he can uh, adapt himself in the conditions of stress how much he ability he has got to perform if suppose uh, a player is very high in his technical ability and at the end of the match in the last minute of the match when there is opportunity to score he misses the goal then all the technical skills are are, are of are, are of no use we may have we have seen examples of Uh, underestimated players who are performing uh, good in the conditions of extreme stress so while selecting the team my i think the psychological aspects the technical aspects the physical fitness aspects and at the same time the opponents must also be read carefully that what is the requirement according to opponents then only a team team should be selected so basically if you want to obje- objectify this thing objectify this thing then the player should be good in his physical aspects he should have a mental a level of mental toughness so that he can perform well in the conditions of stress the player must have a kept a ability which is being required according to the opposition's uh, strengths so all these criteria must be taken care of yes sir it was crystal clear sir and i believe that Uh, if, if there is any attempt from other universities, and the sir has disclosed the strategy of the winning strategy of uh, JNU University, now others may make use of it. <laughs> now, sir, uh, we have only that much questions which is pertaining to this particular session, sir. All the questions, what I feel is, all the questions may be taken up. That will be covered either in the future, uh, coming sessions. Now, over to you, uh, Gangwar sir, for your comments regarding the session, sir, please. Uh, thank you so much, Sudhi sir. Uh, it was really great session, and uh, you know, like the way he was presenting from uh, starting till end, uh, you know, it was a real example, practical example. So uh, he made really wonderful. And uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Rakesh Kumar Yadav, for uh, you know making this happening, and you know the session more interesting as you can see in the chat box, right? So many good positive replies are there. So uh, like. Uh, I've, as as so this is you mention you know like you know the training is something when your own you know uh, understanding is needed so with that uh, thank over to you please okay sir uh, now sir in order to conclude uh, uh, i believe that all the participants would have achieved a lot of information regarding how to implement it now we say that uh, failing to plan is planning to fail Uh, but at the same time i also understood that even if you are having a strong blueprint if you are failing it to put into action then uh, you will be again uh, failing miserably now we had we heard to dr rakesh yadav uh, being a administrator in his, uh, his uh, repute he has also shared with us a lot of things which uh, actually gives a lot of insights into how to be successful as a action coach that is what is required rather than a preaching coach what we require is an action coach and definitely sir your words were so enlightening in that terms uh, and i thank uh, dr yakesh kumar yadav on behalf of uh, uh, all the panelists and uh, all the participants on behalf of sports society of india lecture by national college of physical education minister of youth affairs and sports and hello india i extend my grateful th- uh, gratitude to dr rakesh kumar yadav who has explained everything in detail and very crystal clear thank you very much sir i i, I thank you sudesh ji for your wonderful gesture and uh, within such short time of explanation you uh, taught us many things taught, taught me many things and i thank narendra gangwa dr narendra gangwa for giving me this opportunity and i thank the team thank you very much i also thank my co panelist dr narendra gangwa 
who was also controlling this session at the same time he was also putting his views on the discussion uh, thank you so much sir for your uh, your uh, 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 attendance sir thank you thank you also, so much i also thank uh, co coordinator of this program mr sujit panigrahi uh, for being in the session and uh, uh, being very attentive i also thank all the uh, participants for your active participation uh, thank you very much now there is a small announcement for today's evening session today evening we are having uh, uh, dr maria dinold who is from uh, international council for sports science and physical education who will be talking on inclusive physical education focus on implementation of unified physical education in a two different con uh, continents and we will be having also a scott jerson as a panelist we will also have michael mesarol and we'll also will have teresa lecio i i invite all of you to kindly attend this session and take away the messages uh, once again uh, thank you all Ah. Uh -huh.